Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Hi Martin. Hi Chanel. Tell us about Menard's vision to revive the met alloy smelter and sell beneficiated manganese to the world. You know when you travel south down towards Mayerton, you see on the right this beautiful edifice, all the grass cut and everything looking good, but it's been dormant. You know, we used to go there in the days when it used to be producing ferromanganese, but the high electricity price and other issues resulted in this being put on care and maintenance. And it's so fantastic now that it's going to be revived, we hope, because it is being acquired as part of the Menor Group initiative to get back in there and to produce ferromanganese once more and sell it off to the world. Now, we find that Menor is getting deeper and deeper into manganese. And they are looking at an underground mine in addition to the open cast mine now. They are happy that the rail link is there, that they can get the ore uh, up from, from the Northern Cape. And that, that, that is one of the great things about taking over. There, there's a lot of infrastructure that will enable you to, to export and they are hopeful that they can get a value added product now back into the world because we've got the bulk of the sources of manganese, but only a small portion of the ferromanganese market. And this could be the start of a change. Talk to us about DRD Gold's big win. It's 60 megawatt solar farm. Yeah, this is a great win, you know, for, for the Ergo plant out on the East Rand where it is really an environmentally based plant because you're taking that gold out of those dumps, you're reviving the, the ground underneath, you're creating a new re residue uh, where maybe in many years to come they'll still be able to get some gold out because there still is gold there. But meantime, you're getting as much gold as you can. And at the gold price now, I mean, this is a fantastic thing. So they've had a situation where uh, power was a, an issue before because of peak periods, you know, having to pay a lot. So now they feel as though they've got massive prepaid electricity that will cover half of, of their demand. And, you know, on the issue of filling the other half, they say they won't even have to do that physically themselves because today you've got traders that can offer you, you know, the green electricity that you need. And so this is becoming an environmental treasure because you are recovering the ground, but you're also going to be producing gold that is green. And the world wants clean and green. They want scope to emissions to remove. And this is what's happening out at Ergo. But that's just part of the growth story for um, you know, the company DRD Gold, because they've also got their Westrand projects, which are, are going to move this company forward. So they've got this vision 2028 which at a time of high gold prices is going to lift their output. So you're going to get value and volume. The fifth annual Marikana Memorial Lecture heard that mining companies need mechanisms to resolve conflicts. Tell us about that. Yeah, this was a point made by Ndili Sanku. You know, he was the speaker there. He's the former Minerals Council vice president and current chairperson of Transnet. And he was saying how the mining companies must have these solutions in place to solve conflicts before they get out of hand. And we know the tragedy of Mar Marikana. It is really a, such a terrible occurrence, a tragic occurrence that, that took uh, place there more than a dozen years ago. And 44 people uh, were killed in all. And since then, you know, you've had memorial lectures coming through, people trying to renew the whole place and the attitude. So, you know, earlier this month we had AMCU from the union side coming through and I think they had Dr. Kanyasili Litchfield Tabalala, the former South African Navy Admiral, speaking there. And now this time around you had Archbishop of Cape Town, Taba Mkhoba, and saying, you know, he is getting heartfelt um, hope as he watches this renewal program. Now, it's, it's all being done by Sabanya Stillwater. They weren't the owners at the time of this terrible tragedy, but they feel as though they must help to renew the whole area and get people forward. Coming through were very positive community voices. So they came through during 
the memorial lecture online, giving their impressions and hopes as they move forward. And you can see so much has been done there on the health front, on the education front, even on the creation of job front. You know, the agri-hub that's been developed there is going well. And uh, from the egg-laying point of view, about 7,000 eggs a day are sold from there. But this is just one of the aspects. But one of the attitudes that came through which really struck me, it was from the Moinoi Wagon of Hope Secretary, Reni Mochi. And he said, you know, we've got high hopes because the place is being renewed. One of the aspects is that we're going to have an Olympic-sized swimming pool here. So he said, you know, it is quite an ambition, but we want to try and be at the Los Angeles Olympics. Well, of course, that's a huge ambition, but it's reflecting the sort of new hope of the people there, the new hope for the young people coming through there, the help that's been given to the 44 families, and the way... You know, from all sides, people are trying to get rid of that past, which you can never do, but hopefully make a renewed future. Thanks for chatting to us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Chanel. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. Don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter. <laughs>